Hi, I'm Stuart from the Norfolk Honey Company and welcome back to our allotment apiary for another Getting Started in Beekeeping for 2017. And today uh, we've got another glorious sunny day and we're going to carry out a disease inspection today. We don't have any of the other allotment holders up here looking after their plots so it's nice and quiet and we can actually get into the colony and shake the bees off the frames. Uh, but before we get started, uh, I just wanted to give a shout out and uh, a big thank you to our latest patrons who are sponsoring us in uh, helping to produce all of these videos uh, on our Patreon website. And if you'd like to take a look at that, I'll put all the information down in the description below. But uh, my thanks to Paul, Patrick, Michael, Nicholas and Adam for signing up and becoming our latest patrons. So as I mentioned we're going to open up the colony and do a disease inspection. Uh, before we crack on with that I had a message from uh, a beekeeper called Tom. So hi Tom, uh, asking about the gloves and the fact that my gloves are always so uh, brand spanking new and clean and, and tidy. And uh, what I do is I change the gloves that I wear at each apiary that I visit and I wash the gloves in between each inspection of each hive. So what I'm trying to do is to avoid cross-contamination, spreading disease between colonies, but also you'll find that your gloves will get covered in propolis, wax and honey, and it's good practice just to clean them in between each hive inspection so that you start off with uh, non-sticky gloves so that your gloves aren't going to get stuck to the frames and your hive tool is going to get messy. So I always wash the gloves in between inspections and I always wash the hive tool in between inspections as well. Uh, but these are brand new gloves on just for this inspection. We've been inspecting uh, other apiaries but I've thrown those gloves away and these are blue nitrile gloves and I'll put a link in the description below for you. So let's get on and take a look at the beehive. Okay, so it's the same process as before. This roof is really hot. The sun's been on it and baking it, so it's really, really warm. Lots of bees up above the super. Again, the process that I follow is to remove the super and not inspect the super until we've been through the brood box, and that's really quite heavy today so that's got quite a lot of honey in it so here you can see uh, some of the brace comb that the bees have built and this would be attached to the bottom of the super frames that are in the super well, that's not a problem we can clean that off when we put the hive back together again so we remove the queen excluder and here we are with the same frames as before and we're going to take out the frames this time I'm working from the other end of the hive and we'll take this first frame out nice and slowly and this is the frame that has been causing me the problems and you can see that I've just torn some of the comb that they've built away but we've still got brood in here and I don't want to destroy the brood so we're going to continue to leave this frame in place and I'll just flip it over so you can see the other side and the other side's doing quite nicely too So this is the frame of drone foundation that I placed in and actually they've drawn it to the point where, let's turn it around for you, they've drawn it to the point where, whoops, they've drawn it to the point where the queen has laid eggs and we've now got some drone brood that's been capped. Well, that's not a problem, we can remove that frame as we get towards the autumn and so now we're into the frames proper and so from a disease perspective ideally it would be good to check the bees once each month through the 
active season. This frame is just full of pollen and stores and is looking really good and this is going to be their winter food so they're going to have this through the winter and into the new year so that's looking really good really healthy and so checking for disease once a month and what i'm looking for as i take the frames out i'm looking at the bees generally so i'm looking at the general health of the adult bees i'm looking at the wings to see if there's any deformity to the wings it's nice to see that the wing patterns are as they should be the wings are held on the back of the bee in the right position and that the wings are complete and not deformed at all and then i'm looking at both the open and closed brood so the capped brood and the open brood. So here we've got a frame of brood, but I can't really see all of the brood. So the process here is to gently shake the bees off the frame so that you can expose the brood and see the cappings because it's the cappings that we're looking for. So let's place the frame into the brood box and then gently just tap down on the top bar two or three times, you don't have to knock all the bees off, just sufficient so that you can look at the cappings that are still intact. And we've got a worker bee just in the middle here, just chewing her way out of the cell. So these are bees that are emerging as we speak. And this generally looks like a healthy frame with no abnormalities. And again, on this side of the frame, we again have bees emerging from various cells. Another one here just starting to chew away out. So looking closely at this frame, we've got one cell. And if I hold it steady, we'll get the camera on the frame. And there's just one cell here that has caught my eye and one that I want to take a closer look at. And it's this cell just here, let's move that worker out of the way, it's this cell just in here. It's not fully capped and I can see that there's uh, undeveloped larvae inside so we're just going to open it up and just check to see if there's any abnormalities that are visible. And you just use the edge of your hive tool just to pick away at the top and in fact all that we've got here is just a, a larvae that has not yet developed fully and the bees hadn't capped the cell completely. So that's of no concern to me. So we can pop that frame back into the hive and then we can move on to the next frame. Let's just move this piece of wax out of the way. So as I take the frame out, I'm scanning down and looking at the bees, checking the bees, making sure that they all look healthy. And when I'm satisfied on one side, I'll turn it over and check the other side. And on this frame, we've got a small amount of capped brood. So we shake the bees off nice and gently, and then just have a quick look at the capped brood that all looks really healthy and then to the top of the frame we have some uncapped brood and here we're looking at young larvae of varying ages and what I'm looking for is to see that the color of them is a nice healthy cream pearly white color but they're sitting in the cell at the bottom of the cell in a nice c-shaped position and that you can see the body segmentation of each of the larvae. So we pop that frame back into the hive and move on to the next one. And again you can take your time with this process, you don't have to rush. It's important that you 
check all of the frames. So here we've got something that will be of interest to everybody. I'm, I'm just looking at the bees just to make sure they all look healthy. And it is just scanning, you don't have to look at each and every one. And then we pop the frame back in, gently shake the bees off. And here we've got something that we were looking for last week, which is evidence of wax moth. So here we've got good healthy looking brood, but then to one side we have this Oops, let's move that work out of the way. We have this trail, this trace of light colour in the capping. And beneath here somewhere, there will be a wax moth larvae. And what we're going to do is just to unpick the cappings here and see if we can reveal the larvae. So I take my hive tool. Let's just move that bee out of the way. And we just scrape off the top of these cells and there we've got whoops the wax moth larvae let's see if we can just pick that up and put it on the frame let's see if we can so it's dived back into one of the cells trying to hide from me here it comes And that we don't want to have in our hive, so we simply take it out and give it to the birds. It's caused this area of bald brood. So this is bald brood, where we've got a series of exposed pupating bees. But the cappings have all come away. And it's because the wax moth has created this tunnel beneath the wax cappings and this material is its silk and what we'll do is we'll just remove that and get that out of the way so that's a good spot we've managed to to find ourselves a wax moth larvae so we can reduce the load on the colony and move on to the next frame. Scanning the bees again, and again we've got some sealed brood and some open brood here. The, the bees all look fine, so again, frame back in, two or three gentle taps, and that then reveals the frame. And again, we have another wax moth trail here at the top of the frame. So we'll have another dig around and see if we can reveal another wax moth. And there it is. You can just see its tail. And it's just buried itself back in. And it's now trying to hide from me. And that one can go to the birds as well. And they can be quite destructive. We've got another trace over here. And it could well be that it's just from that same wax moth. There's nothing there. But it does cause quite a bit of damage. And if you allow them to multiply in the colony, then it can be of real concern and cause a lot of damage. So on this side we've got a range of sealed brood and healthy brood and again it doesn't take long. A quick look at the larval structure to make sure that it's segmented, it's the right colour and that everything looks in order and then this frame can go back into the hive again. Before we do, some of you will have noticed, no doubt, that down the side we've got rudimentary queen cells. 
So what we're going to do is just check inside those by peeling the front of the cell away. And this one has nothing in it. And let's check the bottom one. And again, that one has nothing in it. Oh look, we've just got another wax moth larvae that's just emerged from all of the scraping around that I've done. So we need to get that one off just here. And so let's take that one and give that one to the birds as well. And then if I turn the frame over, let me have a look on the other side. Another rudimentary queen cup here. And again, it has nothing in it. So there's nothing to worry. So that frame can go back in. So if you leave the wax moth larvae to run around inside your hive, they can quickly multiply into quite a destructive force. And so it's good to, good practice to make sure that you're checking your bees for all of the pests and diseases that uh, they're likely to encounter. Shake the bees off. A nice frame of brood. There's one or two cells here that are not capped properly. So again, we can just unpick gently and see what's going on. So in this one, it's purely that the cell hasn't been capped sufficiently yet. There's a healthy larvae inside the cell and it looks fine doesn't appear to have any problems at all so we can leave that one and then we have one further down which I suspect will be exactly the same and yes that's exactly the same as well so all good on that side and if I flip it round for you on the reverse side you can see that we've got lots of healthy larvae and lots of healthy cappings on the maturing brood. So we can pop that frame back in. If you guys have any questions please do leave them in the comments below. You can also contact me via our Patreon page if you sign up to our Patreon page. Uh, here's the Queen. So we've got our Queen on this frame and she's looking healthy again. You can check her check her wings, check her legs, make sure that she's looking good and healthy. And for this frame, I wouldn't shake the queen off now that I've seen her. If she had been on a frame and I hadn't spotted her and I'd shaken her into the bottom of the hive, it wouldn't do her any real damage. But now that we've seen her, we'll just simply brush the bees away using our fingertips. The bees will move quite happily, maybe not happily, but the bees will move for you. They're not going to suddenly jump up, well these bees particularly, are not going to jump up and sting because these are fabulous bees. Oh, I'm very lucky to have this colony here on the allotment. And I'm, again, I'm just scanning the brood and we've got eggs over here. There's lots of very young larvae, but everything looks really healthy on that side of the frame. And I'll just turn the frame over Here's the queen again, so we just brush the bees to reveal the brood and then I can just lean forward and look at it and that all looks nice and healthy as well. So we can pop that frame back in, we know the queen's on that frame, so if we need to shake the next frame we know that we're not going to have the queen on there. And because these bees are so placid and need very little smoke, more often than not, the smoker tends to die down and I get very little smoke from it. So this frame is stores. We're into just the end frames now that have lots of stores in them. But on this side, we've got a small patch of, of brood. So I'm not gonna shake the bees off. I'm just gonna move them away 
all of the signs from this colony are that this is a very healthy colony at the moment and that looks fine. So we can pop this frame back in. Now for me that's as far as I would need to go. I don't need to check the two end frames. I can see in the gap that the bees are storing nectar and they've capped off some of the frame. So for me that's as far as I need to go this time round. So now I'm going to close the colony down, just use a little bit of the smoke just to ease the bees out of the way. So again I don't want to be squashing bees. If you have bees that are carrying disease then the last thing that you want to do is to be crushing them and spreading any disease such as nosema that they might have in their gut or dare I say European fowl brood um, but you don't want to be crushing bees and causing the spread of any uh, nasty diseases through your hive. So we'll just take this little bit of comb off here. They all look great. We can pop the two end frames back in. So this is the end frame. You'll recall that as I pulled it out we damaged some of the comb in this corner and what I don't want to do is to now force this frame back in because I'm going to damage bees, I'm going to roll bees and crush bees. So we just shake them gently off the frame onto the top bars and then the frame can slide back in and it will do minimal damage to other bees that are around the area. And that's the frame back in place. The queen excluder can go back on. We tap the bees off. And I'm just going to scrape off the wax that's on the top. And as I place the queen excluder down, I just gently hover it above the brood box so that the bees are brushed out of the way so that I don't crush any bees beneath it. And then I lift the super which is very weighty. I'm very pleased with the honey that they've been able to gather and let's just take a look. I wouldn't normally open up the super every time but let's just show you how well the bees are doing. So here we've got an almost completely capped frame of summer honey. And so now we can pop the crown board back on. Again, I will tap the bees off the crime board and then the crime board goes back on with a gentle wiggle just to prevent the crushing of any bees and then we can pop the roof back on. On at an angle and then bring it across and that again will prevent crushing too many bees. Another great inspection and I'm really pleased with the health of that colony. They look fantastic and I think that probably we couldn't have had a better year with them. They've developed into a really nice full-size colony. They're calm, the brood pattern looks great. There's no disease, very little disease. Really interesting to see that there was the wax moth in there and uh, I'm pleased to have been able to show you those. And moving forward, We'll remove the honey as soon as they've capped it all and then potentially we might split the colony into two and prepare them for the autumn and winter uh, but I'll assess that over the next week or two. If you haven't yet subscribed please do consider subscribing uh, just hit the little button down on the bottom of the screen there and don't forget to check out our Facebook group which is Stuart's Beekeeping Basics. 
We've also got our Twitter and Instagram accounts and you can check those out searching for the Norfolk Honey Company. So we'll catch up next time, but for now, thanks for watching. Jazz hands. <laughs>